Welcome back to the Forensics Unplugged channel, guys. The Unplugged channel, we do content that's not about detailing all the time. This is something I'm passionate about. YouTube isn't a voluntary platform, so if you're not interested, don't watch, but don't tell me you're not interested because I'm not interested in the fact you're not interested. <laughs> a book. This book was written back in 1979. Some of you will know exactly what it is and recognize it if you're in your sort of 40s, something like that. Maybe even in your 30s. Now, back in 1979, an author called Kit Williams, an artist, in fact, primarily, I think, a painter, um, wrote a book called Masquerade. Great title. You know, what's a masquerade? It's, it's like when you're, you've got a mask in front of you and you're just, just, you're, it's an illusion. You're pretending to be something else. It's a masquerade. And on the front, you can see this quite... Well, it's a strange, beautiful form of drawing, but with a boy with a, a mask, the masquerade of a hair in front of him, and the moon, the picture of the moon up there, staring down at the boy. Um, so there's lots of references to the sun and the moon in here, and rolling English countryside, first of all. Now, this book, I can't remember if I've told you this already, the whole purpose of the book that the author, Kit Williams, buried this gold encrusted hair you know jewelry and jade and jewels in it you know buried it in the ground it's a valuable item and wrote this book and at the start of the book it simply says this within the pages of this book there is a story told of love adventures fortunes lost and a jewel of solid gold. To solve the hidden riddle, you must use your eyes and find the hair in every picture that may point you to the prize. So use your eyes and the hair may point you to the prize. But I keep remembering that whenever you read this book. Now, there's this very simple story children's story that runs on the left which isn't critical and I'm not an expert on this book by the way I never solved it it's a tough old riddle um, so you have a story running through it on the left which isn't a great story as far as I can remember I haven't actually read it for like probably 35 years but the key to the book is these wonderful bits of art and these paintings and the book is full of them all and what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the book and and some of the solutions and there'll be some people probably that know a hell of a lot more than me about this um i remember many years ago when i was reading this and i was interested in where this rabbit was and solving the riddle and it was solved so you could go and dig the information out online about all the clues uh, but i haven't done that i've just made some quick notes around the things that i can remember on the book so let's bring the camera in okay guys so we're on to page one of the book now on every page is a hidden hair so here you can see there is a hair in the background you probably just see its face there its little feet sorry its feet down there its little claws there so if you were a kid and you couldn't solve all this cryptid stuff, there was something to keep you entertained, just looking for the hidden hair. And that's how I used to read it when I first saw this. Now, in terms of solving the clue, around the edge of each page, you've got a load of writing. This one over here is, I am as cold as earth, as old as earth, and in the earth I am. Okay, so that's giving a, a clue that it's a treasure that's in the earth. And now here's a big clue as well. One of six to eight. Okay, one of six to eight. That refers to Catherine of Aragon, who was the first wife of six to Henry VIII. Okay, so Catherine of Aragon. If you got that first clue there, and you knew, well, what's the significance of Catherine of Aragon? If you Googled that now, you might get a good clue to where this treasure was buried it's in the earth and it's got something to do with Catherine of Aragon and on the front page we've got a hill the hair is hidden in a hill 
there's a little town here in the background so it's near a town maybe and there's a significance there with the moon looking over the landscape perhaps and there's some animals here as well apart from that not too much going on now we go over to page two uh, I have no idea who this old man is, but we can see the hidden hair is probably him, hidden under the skin. So there's a masquerade there. This man playing the violin is, is, um, is the hair. Who is he? I don't know. You have two figures here, the sun and the moon. Oh, sorry, just go back to the first page. Now, with this writing around the outside, in red letters are... Th are four letters, H-A-R-E, which spells the word hair. And also, around the outside, some of the letters have a little barb through them. And if you take every letter that has a barb through them, you'll get um, the letters G-O-L-D-E-N. So it spells out the word golden hair on the first page, which is obviously what we're looking for. Now, if we go to the second page, the letters in red spell out moon. You have to always, un, you know, they're going to be in an anagram, so you have to figure that out. Obviously, a very easy one. And then the barb letters are um, L, A, D, Y. So Lady Moon is around the outside of the second one. And, okay, if we look at the sun and the moon we've also around the outside of this got um like a calendar with all the months january february march april may so this is an indication of time isn't it this is an indication of time and there's two main clues here well there's two main things on the picture which touch the time um a scale down here which touches around the 23rd of september and their hands, which are united, so the sun and the moons are united at around the 23rd of March. So we've got two time references, and we've got Lady Moon from this page. And we found the hidden hair, who's playing the violin. So it's like he's the performer, and he stopped playing at that time. So there's the time reference. So you've been given us some sort of time reference here. On this third page, we have the anagram uh, rise, R-I-S-E, and then in letters around the outside, the barbed ones are sun. So sunrise is the clue. So we have three clues now, golden hair, moon lady, and sunrise around the outside. And when, in this picture, there's the hair, it's not hidden very well. Again, in the rolling English countryside, so it looks like we're up on a hill looking down, we have the hare sitting on a stone that looks like a frog. And, um, yeah, that's a clue as well, I think. Now, this third picture is very, very interesting. The hidden hair is underneath the skirt of the lady with many pockets. And there's a strange, can you see, if we zoom right in here, look at that. Let's just zoom that in. It's numbers, weird numbers in a square. The highest number, it looks like a 16, which gives you a strange clue. Why nothing higher than a 16? Um, well, if it's a letter reference, it could be. Could those all be letters? You know, because there would be a... How many letters in the alphabet? 26? <laughs> 24? I don't know. I'm, not, I'm being serious as well. But that could be a letter reference. We have a girl... We've got honeybees. Um, we've got some other creatures in here, which is interesting. They just look, the positioning of them looks quite interesting, doesn't it? Let's just back this out a bit. Right, round the outside, these spell honeycomb. So we have a honeycomb and we have a grid reference. Okay, in that picture. Again, rollish English, rolling English countryside in the background. Now, we go over to a town, an English town, but looks more modern, not medieval. We've got cars driving around, stuff like that down here. Um, this cloud here looks a bit like the corner of England, doesn't it? 
got the Isle of Wight maybe down there, and then Wales there, and then Cornwall there. Is that pointing somewhere? Um, we got a raven, a raven on one arm, and a dandelion on the other. And down here is another one of these number cryptic clues. But the numbers are high. They go up to like, if you can see there, these numbers, they go up to like 90. So we got whatever this is, 99 we've got numbers as well. There's low numbers, 7, 9, 8, 50, there's suddenly a big jump to all the 90s. Very strange numbers, hard to figure out what they are. Um, that's got something to do with the periodic table, I can remember... I can remember that from uh, reading spoilers, and it's a it's a red herring. I think each number results to a letter on the tip periodic table. You can find it, and it spells out something like this is a red herring, or this is false, or something like that. I remember that. So that's false. If we go around the outside, we spell out the words. Let's just sort the camera out. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Let's get that in the middle. Zoom that back in, there we go. If we go around the outside, we have light air. Light air as our words, okay? And we go to our first double page spread of this book. Um, around the outside, we have, I think, child mouse, is it? Yeah, mouse in red and child as the, as the thonged letters. Um, and we don't, you know, the hairs there. Some really unusual things that start catch sticking out in my mind is that there's these other animals. So we've got mice here, and the line of the mice is quite interesting. It's just strangely located, like face down, like it's like that's a pointer of some sort. Um, again, rolling English countryside. Whenever we see these animals, they're strangely located. Um, we were told to use your eyes. Well, there's no eyes on that hair, which is interesting. So we're, um, these animals as well, look, these are strange. They look like they're pointing somewhere to me. Well, I didn't figure that out for myself, but <laughs> I'm trying to just sort of slowly give you some hints on it. Now, the next picture, we spell out the word foul fiend, foul fiend. Again, we got our hair there in the middle. This time we can see his eyes. We've got all these other animals here as well in the picture. She's got, she seems to be pointing as well with her, with her hands. It's these hands, look, they stick out as looking quite strange with these, these fingers. And stuff like that to me. There's some sort of signal being given with these pictures, isn't there? We've got Foul Fiend written around the outside. Again, rolling hillsides in the English country is where everything seems to be shot. Now we go over to this side. The letters around the outside are Lost Smile. Again, we have all these animals. All these animals. And we can see their faces and we see their eyes. But I use the hair to point you to the prize. And we got this reference to the sun and the moon and the rolling English countryside. There's a lot of hills in here. We see this hill. A lot of time we still see a hill and we see a little village in the background. This, you know, this looks like some sort of broad clue that it's on a hill somewhere near a village, doesn't it? We've also had the clue that Catherine of Aragon is involved. We've had the clue that you've got to use your eyes to, and the hair to point you to the prize. Um, it's a bit like through the keyhole. Three, two, one, dusty bin. Now, going on to the next page, our letters spell out. Um, what did our letters spell out in this? Oh, I don't think I've... I wrote, made a note of this, so moldy, moldy, oh I did, hold on, melody, melody, sad melody, and we've got the same guy with his violin, this time he's playing, this time he's playing, 
and the daisies are coming off of the violin. Again, this looks like a hill, a like pig hill, like a the pig's back is the hill. And again, we've got animals on here, and we can see their eyes, and we can see they've all got claws. The rabbits are in the tree here. There's, they're all hidden in the tree, which is interesting, but still, I don't know what the significance of the cottage is. Now we go to another double page. Around the edge we have the words mold jelly and the rabbit is hidden in the jelly mold. Again we have animals on here, a frog. We have the children, the child, the guy, the rabbit. Sort of looks like a town centre. Uh, real art deco look to it, very beautiful, love it. Now we have another page. This page here, the word in red is herring. <laughs> so you've got a red herring. Is this a red herring? And it also says gull, gull herring, but red herring. Um, and there are no clues on this page. And this page is believed to just be a red herring to um, throw you off of the scent. So I think you can ignore this page effectively. Now, this page here, that is Sir Isaac Newton, the man who discovered gravity. I nearly said, went Eureka in the bathtub, but that was somewhere else. Now, this page is very important. If we just look at it, you have Isaac Newton, gravity. Uh, I'm not sure if gravity is relevant, actually, as the puppet master. So he is controlling the puppets. Okay, and the, the puppets have got their hands One's puppet's going to cover their eyes. One's not covering their eyes. Here's all these other puppets up here. Fish, frogs, hare, seagull, ladybird, snails. So in other words, it's kind of hinting that these animals are the puppets. And someone is controlling the puppets. And there also seems to be a colour coding. The rings are different colours. Yellow, red, white, black, green, I think. And we have another one of these cryptic boxes on here. Now, this box, I remember from reading the solution, goes back to that other box that we saw back here, I believe. And apparently, these letters are an abbreviation of towns that are located near the town where the treasure is buried, and these are the distances, I think in miles, from, from those towns. And the clue is they both had an empty square there. So maybe that empty square, you know, it, it links the two together. So in other words, town K is, you know, however many numbers of miles away from the main town. So that could help you locate the town where the hare is buried. Now the words around the outside are Sir Isaac, which is this guy. Okay, but this is a big clue that the animals that you see in the puzzle, um, it's a general kind of clue, are the things that are being manipulated to point you towards the prizes. Okay, and you see that the manipulation is on the feet, the hands, and either their eyes closed or their eyes open. So that's interesting. Okay, massive clue. We'll talk about that in a second. Because understanding this clue gives you a whole load of other letters which will take you right to the prize. This is a red herring as well, I believe. It says gold carp around the outside. The rabbit's hidden cryptically, and that's just a gold carp. So I think you can ignore this page as well. After that, we have another double page. Around the outside, it says stone frog. The hare is hidden there in her thing. So stone frog is what it says around the outside. Again, there's animals in here. These are some of the animals that were hanging up in the, on the thing. So we have another lady. She was one of the puppets in the, in the puppets. You know, not her directly, but human beings are part of the puppets. And you can see her. And look at her arms. They're pointing off in funny places, aren't they? So we've got something going on with hands, feet and eyes that we're being told. And different animals. And you can see the symmetry. There's something going on. 
We also have letters around the outside, don't we? Does, so does, does it have something to do with pointing off to some of these letters around the outside of where it's going to be? And here is the final page, and it says silver cloud or cloud silver. Okay, so the clue for this, the clue for the, the, the whole thing goes back to this. And what this is trying to tell you is that I think there was more clues hidden away all the way through the book as well. I don't know it. Some of you guys may know more about this than I do. But the clue was that on every page of this book is, is a creature, whether it's a human being or an or a animal, where a rabbit, seagull, butterfly, whatever. But wherever you see its eyes, it's going to point you to letters. So we go all the way back to page one. What animals do we have on here with eyes? Well, we have the rabbit here where you can see it's two eyes and you can see the mouse here with one eye, two eyes, one eye. Now the clue was that if it's got one eye, that eye is on the left hand side. So you would draw a line from its eye through the hand on its left hand side and that line would go off to a letter. And you'd also draw a line from the eye to the leg on the left hand side because it's left eye, left leg, and that would draw a letter. If you've got two eyes, like this, then you would draw a line from the right eye there through to the right leg and the left eye through to the, sorry, right eye to right paw, so it'd go down there somewhere. Left eye, left paw, it'd go down there somewhere. If it had feet as well, you'd draw those, but there's no feet, so you can't draw them. So then you go to this one, it's got a right eye, so the line will go through its right eye to the right hand. So if you drew that, it would probably go to the E, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it would go to the E, and then it would go through that leg down there somewhere. You'd have to draw the lines on with a white pen. You, you, there is other clues as well that you're supposed to pick the, the fattest toe and the longest finger somewhere in the book, I believe. Um, and you draw the lines here from the right eye through to the right paw, the left eye through to the left paw, wherever that is. Where's his left paw? Just looking. Be up here somewhere. Maybe. Um, maybe there's no paw. I can't remember. Now, if you did that, you'd get all these lines going to letters. And that would spell out the word Catherine on this page. If you did the same on this page, so you drew the lines from the eye to the, through his longest finger there, through that one there, through the foot. On this page you would get long finger, so you get Catherine long finger. This one if you draw the lines, you'd get over, so it looks like it's you know, over. So Catherine's long finger over. Then this word with all the animals, all those fish I was talking about, I suppose the fish don't have a, I don't know how the fish work, if they go through their tail or something. But anyway, the rabbit, it's not showing you his eyes. So is there any other animals? Not I can see, but this one is um, shadows. So Catherine's long finger over shadows. And then this one, I suppose you've got to do it through the bird thing or whatever. But this one is earth. So Catherine's long finger overshadows Earth. And this one is buried. So you do your lines from the right eye to the right foot, you know, down here, whatever. And we've got the mouse. So we do the mouse through its feet. So Catherine's long finger overshadows Earth. Buried, sorry, is this one. This one is yellow. This one is amulet. So now we've got Catherine's long finger overshadows earth buried yellow amulet. And this one is midday points. So if we do all our eyes, etc. The, if that might be a red herring though, our, in, it might be a red herring, 
you could drop the in. Light of, I think it's Eclipse. Oh no, or Equinox is it? I can't remember. I've got Equinox, I think it is. Look You is the final one here. So overall, it's Catherine's long finger overshadows the earth buried yellow amulet. Midday points the hour in light of Equinox. Look You. If you take the first letter out of each of those sentences, C L O S E, close, um, B Y, buried yellow, by, close by, and then amulet midday points, um, hour light of eclipse, look you, close by Ampt Hill. Ampt Hill is a town near Bedford in England. So it's close by Ampt Hill. Catherine's long finger overshadows the earth. Buried, ye buried yellow amulet. Midday points the hour in light of the eclipse. Look you. You also had that reference. to You got to look on the hour of the eclipse. And you had that reference back here to time. And there was a calendar somewhere, wasn't there? Where is it? Here. So that is like the spring equinox or something like that. So you've got to go. So really guys, from linking all the eyes to the feet, so the right eye to the right hand and the right foot where, where they're available, drawing the lines, we would get that Catherine Longfinger overshadows the earth buried yellow amulet. Midday points the hour in the light of the eclipse. So look ye, look you then. So in the eclipse, and it's close by the town of Amulet. We know it's got something to do with Catherine of Aragon. Now, the, there is a monument to Catherine of Aragon in the town Amp Hill in Bedford, and it's up on a hill. That monument is like a long kind of finger, you know, in the air. And on that midday, on that summer spring equinox, a shadow is cast on that monument. And where that shadow lies on the ground, I guess the tip of it, you tell me, is where you've got to go and bury the, dig up the treasure. Now, apparently two clever professors, I think, solved this clue and were ready to go and get the treasure. But someone else, a chap who didn't, who was happy to be named, but didn't want to be interviewed or something like that, went and found the treasure. And this chap that found the treasure was the business partner, this is this business partner of a man who was in a relationship with a woman who was the ex-partner of Kit Williams. Um, so it was suggested that she may have, because she was um, seeing Kit Williams while he was writing the book, maybe they'd walked there, maybe he, she knew about Ampt Hill, maybe she knew about the monument of Catherine of Aragon. Um, but for some reason, someone linked, found it, and I think much, that was much to the upset of the author. Um, so they may have worked it out without solving the puzzle. They might have known it was something to do with this monument and went up there with a metal detector all around it and found it that way, or who knows the story. Um, I'm more interested in the brilliance of the concept. And what a fantastic idea. What a fantastic way to... Um, what a fantastic concept, isn't it? A magical concept. And I love the artwork. The artwork... I remember as a young kid staring at this artwork and it, some of it was quite strange and unusual, but I see it now and I think it's quite beautiful. And the symmetry in the artwork stands out to me now, but it's obviously easy to say that once all the answers are, are publicly available. You can say, oh, that stands out. They might not stand out at the time. Very difficult, but so many clues and so many clues that I've not mentioned in this as well. I'm not, like I said, I'm not an expert on the subject matter, but a fantastic book, a fantastic concept. And you should go and grab yourself a copy of this old book. I just went, I had it as a kid. And I can't remember what triggered me to go and buy this. I was talking about it in another video. I just went and bought a copy on eBay. And uh, I'm enjoying just spending a little part of the day going through, making some notes and thinking about it. And I think what a great concept. And I would love someone to revive that concept. But you would need a fantastic imagination, wouldn't you? Um, to actually do this and now with the internet you know with the internet you'd have to make it even more cryptic 
Um, it'd be very difficult to do because <laughs> there's so much intercommunication now. But back in, you know, when this was written back in around the 80s when people would be trying to solve it, you'd have been on your own doing research in a very different way. And it'd have been a tough one, but a real magical one, I think, to have got involved with. By the time I discovered the book, I was too young and um, not clever enough. And the answers were already out there, which was a bit of a shame, actually. Uh, it's a bit like Ren Le Chateau. If any of you are interested in Ren Le Chateau, that sort of mystery, um, things like that, that can be a wonderful thing to uh, go and explore and get into. So check out the book Masquerade and I'll get a copy and go and look at the pictures and see if you can solve it. Although, you know, I've given away most of the clues already. Um, yeah, just for fun, just to, just to see the beauty of it. So thanks for watching, guys. An unusual video. Uh, take care. See you soon.